Hello everybody, Elzmo HD here, and welcome back to the Game of Thrones AI Free-For-All Deathmatch series. This is part 9. What is Dead May Never Die? We are returning, uh, sorry, continuing this series. I know there has been a brief hiatus in the output of this series. I do apologize, as I do at the beginning of every single Game of Thrones AI Deathmatch series. Uh, of course, Game of Thrones has returned to the televisions, and honestly... This new season is completely badass. I'm really enjoying it. So I am motivated to continue this series until someone is the king of uh, Westeros. Or at least that's uh, kind of the goal here. So quick recap as to what happened in the last episode because it has been a while. It's been about two weeks since episode 8 has uh, hit my channel. So let's go ahead and just do a quick recap. Uh, major thing is that Dorne, uh, the Empire of Dorne down here in the desert is still at war with Rinley Baratheon over here in the Stormlands. Of course, Rinley Baratheon has gotten the short end of the stick. He has been pushed out of Seaguard, out of Haystack Hall. All of these cities once belonged to him. Even Bronzegate, I think, at some point even belonged to him. Rinley has seen better days. He is exiled over here to his capital. Will he be able to hold it? We don't know. We're going to find out in this episode, though. What else is going on? Um, of particular note, the fall of the river, uh, the Riverlands, House Tully, they had a good run through episode 5 and 6, but now they are reduced to absolutely nothing. In fact, the most populated city in Westeros is more or less likely going to be burned into starvation. Very, very sad day for the Tullys and any Tully sympathizers. Uh, so sorry for you guys who were supporting the Tullys. It looks like they're on their way out. What else of note? So Stannis Baratheon of Dragonstone and the Red Lady are also on uh, a very tenuous, um, very tenuous land here. They are currently at war with a few different people. Let's go ahead and pull up that handy dandy diplomacy overview really fast just to double check. So they're at war with the Reach and the Veil. Vale. Very, very shitty. So they're still at war actually with um, Peter Baelish who I thought had made a peace treaty with them, or a peace deal. A peace deal with them due to the fact that they uh, had lost one of their cities in a, in a you know, they, they, they treated their city for peace. But they're at war yet again, so Stannis is at war with the Reach and the Vale. We'll see if Olena is able to send her armies from the southwest of Westeros all the way to the northeast. It'll be pretty hard for her to do that. But maybe anything is possible, whether there's a will or there's a way. And the north... Um, nothing new. Um, the King of the North, Rob Stark, is still at war with Balon Greyjoy of the Iron Islands. Of course, the Iron Islands is just a shell of what it once used to be. It is now um, basically just uh, Pike. There used to be a few colonies, of course, over here in the north, in the western coast of the north. But that is no more. Sad story for them. Over here in the north, uh, Mance Radar is not currently... At war with anybody, I don't think. Let's go ahead and just double check really fast before we continue right where we left off here. So yeah, Mance is uh, completely neutral. Basically the Switzerland of Westeros, if you will. While Robb Stark is just going to continue to mercilessly beat back the Iron Islanders into submission. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started right where we left off. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out as much as I can. Oh, this is as much as I can. Um, and it's weird because right now I am currently capturing only 30 FPS, whereas normally I'm able to capture 60. I'm not sure what's going on with NVIDIA Shadowplay. I do apologize for those of you who do like to watch a very, very fast and smooth, uh, you know, film here. Well, of course, the next episode will be a bit more smooth. I'm going to get this checked out. But since I've already started recording, who cares? 30 FPS, 60 FPS, it's the same to me. Let's go ahead and get started here. Everything is looking good. I'm going to go ahead and end the turn. I'm going to keep my eye especially on the Stormlands over here as Dorne is on the march. And it looks like finally, finally, Mance Radar has made peace with Castle Black, which is, of course, named Lotus Port. Let's go ahead and just double check really fast. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So Mance Radar is at peace with everybody. And he's actually gone ahead and sent out quite a bit of cities here. Uh, notably Queen's Crown, which is the latest edition of Mance Raider's Empire. He is just spitting out cities. It'll be interesting once he finally comes into conflict with Rob Stark or with somebody else. Let's go ahead and continue directly where we left off, keeping an eye on the Stormlands and, of course, the Tullys over here in Riverrun. 
Now, in addition to the fact that Game of Thrones is currently uh, actually on season again, I believe season 6, another interesting thing is that Civilization 6 has just been announced. For those of you guys who have not seen the Civilization 6 trailer, go ahead and check it out. Of course, there is no gameplay uh, whatsoever in the trailer, which is, I guess, a standard uh, technique that uh, Sid Meier uses. Of course, it's a bit easier to make uh, pre-generated CGI and all that. I mean, it's not really a CGI trailer. It's more just like showing uh, the artwork of humanity and kind of, uh, you know, the deep voice like, Welcome to civilization, you know, hey, uh, you know, we're going to travel through this, the generations and achieve a lot of different... I, to be honest with you guys, I am not too impressed. Now, I'm not like going to be a game critic or whatever. I'm not going to, uh, you know, just talk smack about Civ Six, but, you know, I'm just not that impressed. All that's been released so far is a trailer that shows absolutely nothing in terms of um, actual gameplay. And the screenshots that we got, honestly, the graphic style reminds me of Age of Empires. It's very cartoony. You know, they're kind of going away from this Civ V, very hyper-realistic, kind of detailed terrain, to kind of like a cartoon. And to be honest, that's a little bit disappointing. Of course, my opinion might change. I'm still anticipating the game, the game release. I will be making Civ Six videos, of course. But, you know, I'm just... I'm not that excited, guys. You know, tell me in the comments below what you guys think about Civ Six. Again, maybe my opinion will change. It probably will. It normally does. But anyways, let's get back into um, the battle at hand here. There is a battle outside of River Run right now. The Tollies are more or less likely about to throw up the White Banner and surrender, if they can. The Lannisters, of course, and as well as uh, Elena of the Reach are currently outside the gates, pounding on River Run. Let us in. We will not, uh, we, <laughs> we won't, um, you know, destroy your city that much, I guess, is what they're trying to say. So over here, looks like Lorath has declared the war on Stannis. Which one's Lorath? I don't even know at this point. Maybe the twins? No, it's Hall. See, this is just a mess with these city-states. And who else did? Lorath did as well. Okay, Lorath is the twins, I believe. Or no, it is actually Hall. Or no, that's Karth. I'm so confused. What is going on over here? Okay, so Old Town declared war on the Tullys. You know you're in deep shit when Old Town, which is this little peripheral city that trains the Meisters, is sending out an army of one crossbowman and one Tyreem to take your city, Edmir Tully. You are in deep shit. Well, that's that's a problem, you know. We're going to look out for uh, the Tullys of River Run, but right now I'm going to go ahead and prepare... A, a little bit of an ode, you know, a little bit of a funeral song for them, just because they are on the way out. On the way out. This is not the Red Wedding, this is the, uh, uh, I don't even know. I can't come up with anything clever, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Of course, down over here, Ridley is about to be wiped out of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Storm's End is, well, we're at the end of Storm's End. Uh, I couldn't think of anything else to say about that, really. We're about to see the armies of Dorne conquer Storm End's, Storm's End here in the next turn if they are smart about their unit placement. But let's go back up to the north. Looks like uh, Mance Radar is incredibly aggressive here. Yet another new city, the city of Old Giz, or Gis, to the northeast of Winterfell. I'll tell you what, Rob Stark is not going to have that much room to expand uh, if he lets you know these wildlings come south of the wall and just make you know all these cities. That's going to be a problem for him later on, but of course... Rob Stark doesn't really mind, you know, he's not making settlers. I think the only settler he's ever made was uh, the cities of Bear Island, Deepwood Mott, and Castle Serwin. Everything else he has conquered from the Iron Islanders. So uh, that'll be interesting to keep our eyes on. Back into the heart of the action. Well, let's go check out Stannis before I do go down there. Looks like Stannis' the city of Claw Isle is taking a little bit of damage, but again, in a very, very good defensive position. Of course, I said that about Sharp Point. I said that about Driftmark. These cities were both lost, but they were due to a treaty and not due to an actual war itself. That being said, let's go ahead and end the turn and see if these Dornish invaders will be able to take the city of Stormin for themselves. Aha! Renly Baratheon has been wiped out of the game. That is to say, if Ridley Baratheon's troops, these remnants over here, are unable to capture Stormend or any other city, they are effectively wiped out. He is a lord without a kingdom, without a realm, and he's no lord at all. He'll end up probably taking the uh, taking the black, you know, taking that oath over here in Castle Black, where he will no doubt be, uh, you know, destroyed by Matt's radar, who's just completely expanding 
uh, exponentially in the north. Let's go and end the turn again. So this is going to be an interesting dynamic, right? So Dorne is taking over the Stormlands. So Dorne now is honestly one of the bigger empires in Westeros, uh, discounting, of course, House Aaron, Peter Baelish, and of course, uh, House Tyrell over here, you know, with the um, with Elena. She's just massive. Look at this. Green is blotting out throughout Westeros. And of course, whoever takes um, the city of Riverrun is going to be a bit ahead of the, a bit ahead of the curve, I should say. Let's go ahead and end a few turns and see what happens. Excuse me. So the Crownlands and the Riverlands are now friends. That's great. Although the Crownlands just announced Dorne. Ah, so people are now upset with House Martell of Dorne because they have taken Storm's End. When you take a capital city in Civilization V, everybody hates you. Now, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, and if you're watching this video, you probably are. I mean, this is episode 9, let's be honest. You will know that I think the Civilization V AI is absolute bonkers. You know, there's just no way to reason with people. You, you conquer a capital city in 200 BC, and in 1980 AD, people are still, like, faulting you for it. It's like, Gandhi, come on, man. You know, you're not immortal. You shouldn't care what I did 2,000 years ago. You know, I hope that Civ VI has a more dynamic uh, diplomacy. Because, honestly, Civ Five was lacking in that respect. But, you know, I'm not going to, um, you know, I'm, I'm really going to be neutral on this. You know, as soon as Civ Six comes out, I will, uh, I will leave my, you know, I'll leave my reservations at the door. You know, again, this is about Game of Thrones. This is not about Civ Six, So I will uh, stop talking about that. But of particular note, House Aaron, that is to say, Peter Baelish, has yet again colonized more land outside of his territory, this time in the north. The North is an absolute mess. Look at this. You know, we've got four different empires here. Uh, if you're counting, of course, House Tyrell and Tumbleton over here, a very well-developed city. But this is just insane. How is Rob Stark going to unify the North when the North is consisting of a patchwork of all of these different fiefdoms? Well, I don't think he will. The situation is certainly untenable. Let's go and end the turn and see what happens. And when I say see what happens, I am zooming in very purposely to River Run. Although they have a defense of 41, and although the city is located quite strategically, um, surrounded by these rivers over here, of course, anybody who wants to attack the city itself will suffer a very, very steep, uh, I guess, channel crossing or river crossing. I still think that River Run will fall this episode, which will mean that this episode will have two distinct empires that have fallen, two houses that have been thrown to the wolves, so to speak. But I speak too soon. Let's just make sure that that happens. You know with the Civ 5 AI, sometimes they just sign peace at really weird times. Like with uh, a city that is really close to being captured, sometimes they'll just say, hey, I'll peace you out. You know, it doesn't really make sense sometimes. So we're going to discount that. But over here, Stannis, how is he faring against Peter Baelish? Well, I'm glad you asked, even though you didn't ask. He's doing okay. You know, uh, so far, Dragonstone is completely defended. Um, although Stannis doesn't really have an army, does he? He just has... Um, a red fiery hand and a red pikeman. Although, I guess they couldn't really name these Stannis or uh, something else. You know, red just seems kind of a little bit vague. Let's go back over to River Run, zoom in on the action, of course, and end the turn. It's weird that I'm getting such an FPS hit in this game. You know, usually uh, my laptop, it's not the best laptop, but it can run Civ 6 at, uh, or Civ 5, I should say. Well, not Civ 6, I was talking about that though. It can run Civ 5 very well. Usually uh, a little bit more than 60 FPS, of course. Sometimes my graphics card caps at 60 FPS. But look at this. River Run has been captured by the Lannisters. The Lannisters are back on the field. Ladies and gentlemen, they are back in the game. Of course, earlier on, the Lannisters lost a few cities. But look at this. They captured the Jewel of the Rivers. I'm not even sure if that's a real thing. But River Run is Lannister territory now. And the good news to Lannister is they are actually able to connect the city of the Crag over here on this archipelago, or this peninsula, I guess is more accurate, with the rest of their empire. Very, very good if you support the Lannisters. Very, very bad if you don't. <laughs> of course, the Lannisters are already the most wealthy house in Westeros. I wonder what this acquisition will do for their coffers. This will certainly increase their money, that's for sure. Although, that being said, there is still a Tully unit of pikemen outside the city of Riverrun. 
just like there is or was a unit of uh, Ridley's somewhere over here. Let's go and double check. Right. Ridley Baratheon has a commander off of the coast of the Stormlands. Well, that commander is a Ronin. He is without a master. He needs to find some house that will take him in. Otherwise, more or less likely, somebody else would just capture and kill him. So, Dorne. Very much on the rise, an empire to be keeping our eyes out on for. And the Lannisters, also on the rise. Lannister always pays his debt, and their early aggression with the Tullys did not go unforgotten. The Lannisters have came back, and they came back with a fury. So, anybody who wants to screw with the Lannisters do know that they control the world supply of gold at the moment. And uh, really, I will be interested in seeing what they can do. Now, with that being said... I think everybody here is well aware that the most powerful houses in game currently are House uh, Tyrell over here of the Reach, High Garden, I should say, and the Vale with Peter Baelish. Of course, the Vale not a very populated area. The capital of the area only has a pop of seven. Very, very unpopulated. But just look at the scope. They have Hearts Home in the south. They have all the way up in the north. They've got the Peps. They've got literally. A lot of territory. Let's be let's be real here. And before I speak more, let's go ahead and check out the conflict with Stannis Baratheon's, um, I guess, uh, holdout over here of Claw Isle. It's about to be conquered, but by who? Because they are currently at war with two separate civs. Aha! Olena of the Rich, a reach. House Tyrell has conquered yet again. Claw Isle belongs to her. Well, she has a very disjointed kingdom. How is she going to, uh, you know, really connect these two disparate cities all together? Uh, that's definitely a question that I would ask her, you know, if I had the ability to. And excuse me, I am going to go ahead and log offline if I can over here. How do I do that? You all friends. I'm going to go offline. People try to talk to me when I'm recording. You know, that's not always a good thing for you guys. I don't want you guys to, uh, you know think that I'm like uh, super popular over here. I'm not. I'm definitely not. <laughs> By the way, if you want to add me on Steam, my name is uh, Epileptic Alzebo. Go for it. We will be playing uh, at some point a Civ 5 uh, in Europe Universalis 4 multiplayer. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, all of my subscribers and all my viewers, you guys are welcome to add me. I will uh, accept pretty much anybody as long as you uh, don't have like a you know profile picture of Donald Trump or something, something ridiculous like that. Uh, we'll get along just fine. So again, uh, if you guys want to add me, we will be doing some sort of multiplayer event in the future. I'm not sure exactly when. Um, but once I'm back in America, I'll have more free time. I'm working three different jobs right now, so free time is something that I don't have a lot of. So again, add me on Steam, uh, and I'll let you guys know in a video blog update when I am down to play some Civ 5, because it's been a while since I've played Civ 5, and I would like to play more of it, of course. Might be a little bit out of practice, but that's okay. So that being said, with that out of the way, um, right, so Stannis is on the way out, Claw Isle is dead, City of Dragonstone looks like it's now going to be under fire as well, of course the Reach has been eliminated, the Lannisters are in the Reach right now, or rather in uh, the Tully Lands right now, rebuilding, which is always a good thing. So right now there's peace in Westeros for the first time in a long time, at least that's what it seems like, right? Of course, um you know, de facto or de jure, there's still a war between Rob Stark and the Iron Islands, but we don't really see any sort of conflict between the two. If I was Balon Greyjoy, I would just colonize over here in the north, past the wall. Rob Stark can't really hurt you there now, can he? Well, at least that's what I would do. And other news, what's going on? We see, so we seem to have some sort of uh, dissidence going on over here in House uh, Tyrell's territory, in the Reach. I'm not sure exactly if these guys are coming from a barbarian encampment, but my guess is that these are um, rebel stacks that pop up when they're really unhappy. We can go ahead and double check really fast by going into the diplomacy overview. Oh no, sorry, I misspoke too soon. Going into... which one is it again? Is it... hold on one second. Diplomacy... there is a way to check to see how happy people are. Is it over Royal Congress, maybe? No, it's not there. Oh, uh, whatever. I'm sure they're unhappy, though. We can go ahead and pull up the demographics just to give you guys a heads up of who is winning or currently in the lead in their respective categories. 
Of course, Rob Stark is leading in population, which is always a very strange thing, and crop yields. In addition to GNP and soldiers. So Rob Stark is at the head, or rather, of the helm of Westeros at the moment. And Dorne, look at this, literate Dorne. You never really think of, uh, you know, the Dornish people as being a bastion of scientific uh, learning and literacy, but here we go. This is uh, proving that the desert, desert, desert nomadic uh, peoples can really shine here. In both approval, literacy, and land. Very, very good for them. Now, Peter Baelish is a bit of the wild card. He has the most manufactured goods, which I think corresponds to the economy. Always a good thing. And approval, yes, approval is lowest in the reach. That is more or less likely why we are seeing rebel problems outside of the capital city of Highgarden. Let's go and end a few more turns before we end off this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There will no doubt be more until there is a clear winner. I'm not sure how long that will take. Maybe it will take even uh, longer than the uh, series. Maybe, maybe even George R. R. Martin will die by the time this uh, series is finished. I certainly hope not. Man is getting a bit old. Let's uh, hope that he releases those books before he passes. Just so that that way, you know, the, uh, the series can follow suit. Although I think at this point, maybe the Game of Thrones um, TV show might diverge a bit from the books. Because they've already signed on for, I believe, eight seasons. And there's not eight books. So it's going to be interesting to see how they exactly do that. I know HBO, um, they, they've got some really brilliant writers, but it would be nice if they can adapt it directly from the books itself. But of course, this will be a problem if there are no books to adapt it from. So George R.R. Martin, if you're watching my videos, which you no doubt aren't, uh, please hurry up the books, you know? I, I love you, man. I, I love your books. But, you know, you can't just spend six, seven years between each book. You know, you're already like 60 or 70. You know, you, you gotta pump out some more books, man. We all love your series. I think it got a lot more popular than even you expected, so... You know, do us a favor, finish uh, The Winds of Winter, or whatever book you're currently working on, and uh, we would really appreciate it. So that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, in the next episode, there should be some more warfare, probably between Peter Baelish and Olena uh, Tyrell. I'm thinking that the two preeminent powers in Central Westeros will come to, uh, come to fight each other at some point. And that's nothing to say about Rob Stark, who has currently the most uh, soldiers and the most population. He's up to something. Perhaps he will attack Man's Radar in the next episode. We don't really know. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for episode 10. And continue watching the series, of course, on HBO or however you watch your series. Looking at you guys, you downloaders. Uh, so far, a really good um, season. So... Again, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for this uh, series. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care, and I'll see you on the next episode.